Today I'm sharing 14 cards I made with the May 2024 Pink and Main Crafty Courtyard Kit called Tea Time. Welcome to my channel. This is Kendra and I'm so glad you're here. Now I recently shared an unboxing video of all of the contents of this kit, but here's a quick look of what all is included. The Pink and Main Crafty Courtyard Kits are packed full of card making supplies. The monthly subscription kit base price is $34.99 and an automatic shipping charge is added based on your location. And when you subscribe to the kits on the Pink and Main website, it will be shipped around the 15th of the month. But you can still sign up and purchase through the end of the month unless it sells out. Your subscription will change to the next month's box on the 1st. An additional benefit of being a subscriber is that you receive 10% off other products in the store. If you'd like to subscribe, I'll have a link down in the description box. This is an affiliate link, which means if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you, and this helps to support my channel. The kit includes colored cardstock, twine, gold enamel dots, an exclusive confetti mix, this 6x6 paper pad that has 24 double-sided patterns with some beautiful florals, checkered patterns, stripes, and more. And the stamp set here is called Tea Time. It has a bunch of tea-themed sentiments that go perfectly with the two die sets that are included in this month's kit. This first one is called Tea Party, and it's got some really cute elements. It's got the ice cubes, the lemon slice, a spoon, and then the second one is called pastry tray dies and it's got some sweets and um, a spatula really cute kit this month so let's go ahead and get started now when I make a bunch of cards I usually do it in stages so I'm gonna walk you through each stage and I have sped this video up quite a bit so that it's not too long but just remember that you can change the speed on the playback under settings if you want to slow it down some I placed both of these die sets on a magnet sheet and placed it in one of the pink and main storage binder inserts that are made for the storage binders. I love these binders because I can easily find what I'm looking for. Now these are sold separately, but I'll have these linked below in addition to any other additional products that I use to make my cards today. So off camera, I went ahead and cut out a bunch of dies from both die sets. I used colored cardstock and white cardstock. I figured I'd try to see what was faster using colored cardstock for the different pieces or just coloring the white pieces with Copic markers. But honestly, it took about the same amount of time, so it's really just your preference what you enjoy doing more. But I thought it would be cool to cut the teapot or pitcher out of um, this frosted piece of packaging that I saved from something. I'm not even sure where it came from but um, I'll either put the craft paper behind it to make it look like tea or I'll try coloring it with a brown marker. But I cut out the little sugar packets, the spoons, the tags, and the lids from gray cardstock, and then I cut out all of the little pastries. But I have all of these die cut pieces ready to go for when I'm gonna assemble my cards. So my next step, I went through and tore out 12 different papers from the paper pad and there are 24 different patterns on these 12 sheets and I put together three of them that I thought matched well. So I have four different sets of three, but I'll only be using nine of the 12 sheets. My plan is to use the paper as efficiently as possible using some of my favorite pink and main cutting dies. Usually I cut these up with my paper trimmer and I use all of the pieces like I do with my quarterly card challenges, but today I figured I'd try it with dies. I'm using the stitched rectangles set two dies. The largest one here is just slightly smaller than an A2 card base. So there will be a little bit of that card base showing, but I'm using the largest and the third largest on the same sheet of paper to cut out a frame. And then the second largest rectangle die, I'm using that on another sheet. And I'm also using the fancy tag die set. The tag die fits next to the second largest rectangle on a piece of paper. And then the decorative top fits next to the two that make the frame. And then I'm putting the scallop tag on the third sheet. And of course the fourth largest stitched rectangle die fits next to the one, um, or to that one. And then the third smallest fits below the fancy tag top die. So I'll be running these through my die cutting machine and I know I'll have scraps, but I'll show you what I do with those here in a bit. I bought an Anna Griffin Empress electric die cutting machine, 
recently and I got the large plates so that I could cut out a bunch of stuff at the same time um, since I do a lot of die cutting but I did not realize how handy this uh, magnetic sheet is I used some low tack tape to hold the dies in place for the first sheet but then I realized I could just put the dies on this magnetic sheet so I used um, for those other two papers that I didn't have tape on I just taped the papers down directly to the magnetic sheet and I cut out all of my pieces but I am loving this new die cutting machine I love that I can cut two sheets of six by six paper at the same time but now that I have all of these pieces cut, I'm just matching the different pieces together. And since I cut that middle part out of the frame one, I can place that middle piece onto another card and I can cover up the second largest uh, rectangle die so that it looks like I've got um, a frame. But anyway, I'm just kind of putting things together, trying to decide what I want to do. And um, at this point, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with all of the other stitched rectangle pieces. I just knew that I wanted to have, you know, that back layer with um, a rectangle showing just a little bit of that back layer. And I knew I wanted to put together those tags. I tried a few things, but then I remembered that I still had some scrap pieces from the paper that I cut. Um the die cuts from so I cut the strips and square pieces away from those skinny die cut edges so that I could use them with the smaller stitched rectangle dies but I played around with the pieces until I found a layout that I liked so I'm basically just matching these up and, and placing them onto a card base so that I can put them together here in just a bit so next, I just cut up the colored cardstock that came in the kit, and I mostly cut these to four by five and a quarter inch panels so that I could use them as layers behind the pattern paper pieces. But then others I cut to five and a half by eight and a half to use as card bases. For the cards where a lot of the layered panel shows, I decided to use some embossing folders from my stash to give it some interest and texture. Now most of these pink and main embossing folders came in past Crafty Courtyard kits, but some are available to purchase separately in the pink and main shop. The one with the leaves is called Branches, then the Sunburst is called Sunray, then the Wood Grain, Chevron, and Fun Stripes, they're all listed down in the description box. So I went ahead and embossed those panels off camera, and then next I placed all of the stamps onto my stamp wheel and stamped them out onto a piece of 6x6 white cardstock using pink and main ink in both dress shop and construction colors. That way I'll have plenty of sentiments to use on my cards. Now usually when I make a bunch of cards, I do it in steps and sometimes it takes me a few days. But um, here I'm just showing you my process in order. So I'm just gluing all of the pieces down. I've placed them into cellophane bags just so that I can keep everything together and stay organized. But this step is basically just gluing down everything. Now I made three each of a lot of these cards so I'm only going to show me putting together one of the most of the layouts um, since it's pretty much the same for the others. But uh, for this particular layout I'm using a landscape card where the strip goes across the bottom and a quarter inch strip above it and then that stitched rectangle towards the top and I added a scrap strip to the top part just to keep it level on the back of that stitched rectangle piece. And so um, I did this for two of them. And then for the third card, rather than making it a landscape card, I decided to make the third one portrait. So you'll see here in just a second, I put the, the strip along the left hand side and then the stitched rectangle piece to the right of it. I added some white Love From Lizzie peel-off stickers along each side of that strip before gluing down the rectangle. For the third layout, I used the branches embossing folder to emboss that back panel. And here I'm just gluing down the tag pieces. And rather than using the small circle die that came in the die set, I just used my crocodile to punch a small hole into the top of the tag so that I'll be able to add some twine to make a bow. So 
so after making my bow I popped the tag up with some foam tape I finally finished using up all of my last roll from Pink and Main so I had to buy another roll of foam tape but I absolutely love this it lasts forever it's some it's wonderful tape now for the fourth layout I'm using an embossed panel and that skinny uh, strip along the left with another stitched rectangle on top of that and again this uh, I believe this is the branches embossing folder as well and then I use the other scrap strip horizontally across the bottom half of that stitched rectangle piece and I did this again for um, the next card so the same layout I used it two more times so I'm only showing me putting together this one card but I do have two additional cards using the same layout Now for this fifth layout again I used an embossed panel and this time I decided to use some double-sided adhesive instead of liquid glue just to see if it would help it stick better and I am using two of the square scraps and I'm offsetting these and overlapping them slightly and then I'm adding the small stitched rectangle the striped piece there in the middle and I only made one of uh, this layout and then for my last layout same thing I used an embossed panel and then I placed two of the small stitched rectangles on each side top and bottom and then one of the squares that I layered onto some yellow cardstock I'm, I'm going to be placing that in a diamond shape in the middle this one's um, pretty straightforward, but I, I like the simplicity of it. Now that all of my cards are put together, it's time to decorate them. Since I already have all of my die cuts ready, it's just a matter of deciding what to put where. So I'll start with these tag cards. I think putting the sentiment across the bottom with a little teacup on top is really cute. Um, and then on the second one, I cut a slit in the lemon slice and I added it to the cup before gluing this down. And I really like how this looks. And you'll see me do some finishing touches, touches a little bit later. Um, I add some touch of gloss to give it some shine. And then on the third one, I added the tags, the uh, sugar packet and the spoon. I put that next to the teacup. And I finished all three of these cards off with a gold enamel dot. And I just love the embossed background and all the different layers on that tag, the scallops, the bow, all of it. I think this one's super cute. For this next card, I'm using the thick frosted die cut for the picture, and I'm going to try to uh, color the back side of this with a brown Copic marker. And as you can see, it's not very smooth, and it wasn't really the look that I was looking for. So um, I decided to add craft colored cardstock behind it to make it look more like tea. I added glue across the bottom and then a few dots where I'm adding some ice cubes to be able to attach it to the craft piece. Of course, you don't want the glue to show through. And I added a lemon slice. And then to help hold this down, I added a silver top and a silver bottom. So adding glue on top and bottom will help to hold this down some. And uh, I added a fourth ice cube and a silver layer behind the sentiment. And I decided against using the spoon, I had this out and was playing around with that for a bit, but I just decided not to use it. But I did add some tea bags on the corner of the sentiment. And then to make this look more like tea, I added some glossy accents on top of the, the tea part just to make it shiny. 
And of course this had to dry overnight, but I really love how this card turned out. On this pink card, I'm using the pastry tray dies. I love the combination of pink and gray or silver together. So I'm using the tiered tray and I am placing a bunch of the pastries on top of each of those pink trays. And um, I end up using the sentiment that says, I hope you have a brutiful day at the top. I think that's really cute. Now this card has a really busy floral background, so I just kept it simple. I added the pink tea kettle and the sentiment on top, and then just added some gold enamel dots to the center of some of those flowers. Really pretty. And then for the ones with the scrap strip across the bottom, I added a sentiment on top in line with the quarter inch strip and then I added more of the die cuts on top. I used ones that matched the paper. And then I did the exact same thing on the lemon one. And for this portrait card with that scrap strip, I started out trying to use this white picture, but then I just decided to go with another one of the tiered trays with more pastries. I just wasn't feeling this. I felt like it needed more color. So um, I'm just using the white tiered tray and then some green trays and adding more of those pastries. And one thing I wanted to mention, I forgot that I did not film me putting the glossy accents on all of these cards. So when you look at the pictures of the cards, you'll see some of the elements are shiny. So I tried to put some on top of all of the donuts, the glaze on the donuts, or um, the cherries, the strawberry, um, any of the lemons, anything that would be shiny, I added some of the touch of gloss too. I keep calling it glossy accents. It's touch of gloss, but it's basically the same thing. What it does is it, it dries, but it makes things shiny. So on this one, I didn't put the sentiment on camera, but I did end up adding one that says happy birthday after the fact. And for the rest of these cards, I just played around with what die cuts I had left until I was happy with the placement. And then I just glued them together off camera since they're pretty straightforward and similar to what I just showed you. Here are all of the cards I made with the May of 2024 Crafty Courtyard Kit called Tea Time. I really hope that you like them and I hope that this inspires you to get creative. Let me know which card is your favorite down in the comments. Now, these Crafty Courtyard Kits really are a great value. If you'd like to subscribe to the monthly kits, I'd love it if you would use my affiliate link in the description box below. I'd also love it if you would give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.